Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how you create menu items in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So first, what are menu items? Menu items are what we can use to access the forms, the reports, the processes within the system. Um, here, if I click on this navigation pane on the left-hand side, um, there's this node that says modules. This is going to show me all the modules in the system. Um, behind the scenes, each one of these module panes refers to a menu is what it's called within Visual Studio. And then each one of these links we have here are the menu items that we can click on. So without a menu item, we can't actually access any custom forms or reports or processes, batch jobs um, that we've created in the system as a developer. Um, so after we create a form, we really need a menu item. Um, let's just compare the menu items and what we see existing in the system just so you can see how they line up. If we go into Visual Studio and we look at View, Application Explorer, um, and then under User Interface, menus we can see all the menus in the system so I can see accounts receivable and then if I expand this I can actually see these subfolders these are referred to as sub menus and then within sub menus you can actually place menu items that we'll get to in a second um, but you can see here all these folders um, can have a label uh, and then each one of these menu items underneath can have their own label and access um, a form, a report, a process and some other things. So here we can see the same thing, accounts receivable, the same sub menus and the same menu items listed here. So it's kind of a one to one relationship. So let's get started. Let's create a menu item and then we can talk through um, some details about them. The way we create a new menu item is we first need a new project. So go up to File, New, then Project. We need to select Dynamics 365 and then Finance Operations node here. We can give it a name. I'll call it Tutorial create menu items I'll create call it two just because I've got another one um, that I already created I'll say um, yes to save my previous project and now it's created a new one um, the first thing we need to do is make sure our project is in the right model where we want to add the code so if you right click on the project and select properties um, you'll get this window you can change the model to be the model that you would like to save your custom code to. In this case, I have a custom code uh, model named RSM Tutorials, and I'll click OK. Once we have a project open, and this is just the same first steps for any code you would create in D365, we can right click on the project and then select Add and then New Item. This is going to pop up the standard dialog asking us what type of item um, we want to create. And this is where we can talk about that there are three different types of menu items. There's action menu items, there is display menu items, and there are output menu item types. Um, functionally and technically in D365, these are essentially all the same. I would say this is more of a legacy thing um, that's come over from past versions, um, but it's still um, here in D365, so let's talk through it. Um, as a best practice, display menu items should be used to open um, forms. Uh, output menu items should be used to open reports. And then action menu items should really be used to run a process such as a batch job. That's the general criteria that they fall under. They all have the same properties, um, so you can set them to do the same thing. You technically can create any one of these menu items and, and specify any type of object you would like to open. But as a best practice, we want to um, think through what type of object we're going to open and then create the correct menu item of the right type. This is going to help developers in the back end 
um, find your menu item if they're looking for it a little easier. Um, it, it uses a way to group our menu items together. In Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 and before, the menu items had a slightly different icon depending on what menu item type we used, and that would help users understand what kind of object they were open, opening. But in uh, Dynamics 365, we're just seeing these straight links. There's not an icon um, anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, specify a display menu item because I'm planning on opening a custom form called RSM Vehicles. But if I had wanted to open an existing form, I absolutely could do that as well. Um, we could call it something sales table. You typically want to name your uh, menu item the same as, say, the form or report that you're trying to open. Um, but definitely there's scenarios where you may not want to. So I've typed in the name. I've selected my display menu item. And then I'll click Add. Now it automatically opens our menu item in this designer form in the middle, but if it didn't, we could just double click on this menu item to get it here. It's important that we get it in this design form and then right click and select properties. Um, when I select properties from this middle form, I actually can edit these properties. They're all editable. Whereas if I just select them from either the Solution Explorer or the Application Explorer, that they're grayed out and I can't edit them. So if you're running into that issue, make sure you're selecting the node in the designer node. Then these properties become editable. Okay, the next thing we need to look at are the primary properties we need to edit on the menu item. There's no subchildren and no nodes to add for a menu item. It's all about setting these properties. So we need to tell it what form or report or class we want it to run. And the way we do that is we start with this object type property. Um, by default, it's set to form, but we could also set it to class, query, Q group, SSRS report. Um, again, since this is a display menu item, I'm really uh, planning on opening a form. So I'll leave it at form. And then the next thing we need to go to is the object property. The object property tells us which form we're going to open in this case. I could click the drop down and it'll show me all forms in the system, um, or I could uh, type in the name of my form. If I type something that is not the name of a form in the system, when I compile, I will get a compile error. So the system is doing some validation that what we type into this property matches the object type that we have here. So I'm going to go and type um, a form that I've already created named RSM vehicle and put it into this property window here. The next thing, now that I've specified which object I'm planning on opening, I can go back to this label property. I want to specify a label. This is the text that will show on the front end system in the browser here. Um, very often we want to use the same label or text as our underlying object. So for instance, if this is a form and this form has a caption, we want to use that same label ID um, and text here. Um, but this menu item does allow you to override that or specify something different. Um, and that can be useful in certain uh, scenarios. So in this case, I'm going to type vehicle and hit enter to um, enter in this text. I could click the ellipses button here to create a label for this text. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just type in um, the raw text. OK, at this point, we've really set the crucial properties that I need this menu item to work. We've told it what form we're going to run and we've given a label. The next thing we need to do is we need to add this menu item to a menu. If we never add it to a menu, we won't be able to run um, this form. So let's look at that next. If I go up to the Application Explorer, go to User Interface and Menus, I can look at all the menus in the system. I can create a new menu if I want to. Um, but in this case, I would like to add our menu uh, item 
to an existing menu. So I'm going to pick the accounts receivable menu. At this point, I since this is a base Microsoft menu, I either need to um, extend this menu or find an extension that I've already done with this menu. So if I need to extend this menu, I can right click on it and say create extension. This will create a new extension object and put it in the model that I'm working on. So if you've never extended this menu before, this is what you would do and you would add that menu extension to your project. In this case, I actually think slash know that I've already extended this menu before. So before creating another object, you're going to want to go to user interface, menu extensions and check to see if you've already got an extension for that particular menu. So if I expand this, I can actually see that I've got an extension named accounts receivable dot RSM tutorials and I can look closely. It's a little hard to tell. I know the text is a little small, but in between the square brackets, it says RSM tutorials, which tells me it's in the same model that I'm trying to uh, write this code in. So I've already got a menu extension. So instead of creating a new one, um, I can just reuse this existing extension. So it, first, I'm going to add this menu extension to my project so that when I build it um, and make changes to it, it, it gets included in my build. Next, I can double click on my uh, menu extension to open the uh, designer for it. I'm going to save. I see there's a little star next to my menu item. I'm going to save to make sure that that's saved. At this point, now that I've got the menu extension, I can add my menu item directly to it or I can create a folder or some menu as we call it um, within this menu extension. The way we create a sub menu is to right click and say new sub menu. That'll go ahead and create a new sub menu. We can give it a label of whatever we want and rename it um, and that essentially just gives us a new folder um, to add our menus to. I've actually already got one named RSM vehicles. So I'm going to go ahead and add to this existing one. So I'll go ahead and delete the one I created. If I expand this one, I've actually already added this menu item to um, this form right here. Uh, at least I thought I did. Maybe this is another one. Um, but I can drag my menu item into this submenu. Yeah, it looks like I've got a, a second one. When I drag it into the submenu, it's going to add this menu item um, to the menu. All I have to do from here is build and compile, and then I can refresh my browser window to see the changes that I've made. So we'll give this a second to build and compile. After the build has completed, uh, we can go back to the browser window and then we need to click refresh on our browser window to pick up our changes. Now that the browser window has refreshed and come back up, we can go back to the modules node on the left hand side. We can expand accounts receivable and we can find the sub menu that we've added our menu item to and we can expand it and sure enough we can see our menu item here. It's using the label that we specified and if we were to click on it, it would open up the form that we told it to or in your case, if it's a batch job or report, it would open to that as well. The other thing we can do is we can go to the search for a page up at the very top and we can search for the label that we gave our menu item and it will show up in the drop down as well. So that's really nice. If you don't have this browser window, you can actually start and open that browser window from within Visual Studio. You can come back to your solution. You can select your menu item, right click and say set as startup object. It'll show up as bold. And then when you click start, Visual Studio will open a new browser window, open uh, Dynamics 365 and go to 
the object that you specified in this menu item, but it at least opens a browser window to D365 so that you get that URL and then you can see the modules the same way we looked at before. Okay, awesome. There are some additional properties within menu items that are still really useful, um, such as the um, country configuration key and the configuration key if you're looking for security, because we can control these menu items and which ones show um, at a per user level. Um, but that's uh, for another lesson. Um, the other properties that are really useful, we're actually gonna have a separate um, video and article on um, how to use those. And those are really the uh, query property, the parameters property, the um, multi-selects property, the needs record property, the enum type property, and the enum per, uh, parameter property. All of these properties allow us to pass data into the object that we're calling. Um, so in the case of a form, we can actually make that form uh, look and feel and run a little bit differently based on the information we're passing in from these menu item properties. So I'll cover that in um, the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.